I'd known about the about Kip Gresham for many years. I'd known lots of artists that had worked with him. So he was my obvious choice, but I knew nothing about it. And luckily when I went there, you know, Kip's um, way of working is really to try to find a way to help the artist make um, they make the kind of things that they're interested in. I was not interested in just going there and making something that I knew about, something that was a print. So what I wanted to do was to work with prints, with silk screens, in a way that I might make sculpture. So I treated each screen, each shape, each element as if it was a material, as if it was another layer of material to then attach or to cover, overlap something. Um, and so I started really without, without too much of a kind of known idea, but more in the sense of something that might work as an equivalent for the sculpture, but in two dimensions. So really I just started by drawing shapes, I did a lot of them on the computer, they were then transferred onto screens and what I wanted were, even if I didn't use them, I wanted many, many more screens than I might use. In the same way that in my studio, it's very much about having stuff around me and then working with that. It, it may have a starting point, but it certainly doesn't, you know, I don't know exactly how something might end up. Um, so really it, it started like that and then I've now been 12 visits, they're usually three days each time and it's a very interesting process of starting on the first day which essentially is about creating a kind of backdrop I suppose for something to start to happen on the paper. Um, and then as it progresses it gets much more about finishing parts, tweaking things. It's a very interesting process because using transparent, translucent layers, you can actually have something that might appear to be too complicated and then you can actually calm it down quite a lot by adding another layer to it. From a starting point where I think the sculptures really influence the prints or you know, the, the, the certain images, imagery that I was using that, which, which came from the, the sculpture and then obviously through the medium of the print it changed and, and you, know, you have to allow for what, what happens within that process. But now, after having been working for over two years with the uh, prints, they're, they're definitely feeding back into the sculpture. So I'm seeing a way of making, uh, changing the sculptures in relation to the prints rather than the other way around. But they're definitely um, working very, very much together. Um, and that's exciting, you know, because in some ways, you know, sculptors do works on paper, often, sometimes it's done as a more commercial exercise because obviously it's difficult sometimes for people to buy a, a sculpture, mm -hmm. so often artists will take that route. For me, it was, it was very much about uh, making things that helped, you know, that were about a way of seeing things that would feed one way and the other back to the sculpture, from the sculpture back to the print. And that's exciting to, to be in that position because uh, I don't really know exactly when I go there, I don't want to know too much about where they're going to go. So it's quite nerve-wracking in a way, because I arrive on the first day and the screens have all been made and we then have to choose colours as we go along and, and you make the first sort of mark on the paper by putting the first screen on. The process with silkscreen is quite interesting because you put through so many with one image, so many with a different image, and so sometimes the, 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 the part that might be at the very back of the uh, print to start off with can be another image which is at the front. So you, you get to this point where you really have an enormous variety of usage of of, of the shapes and the, the images that I'm working with. But you don't have a, an idea from the start what the final image is going to be? No. That's interesting. I build it up. Um, 
exactly as I might make a sculpture. So it's not, no, in no way is it predetermined. Yeah. And, and in a way, what, I'm, what, I, what I love about it is that, uh, you know, very, very unexpected things happen. And it's that kind of excitement of something happening that you don't know about that's actually, it makes it worthwhile. Mm. You know, I, I don't want to, some people go to the print studio and they have a, an image of something and say, I'd like to make this. So they know what they want to make, and basically what they're taking perhaps is a is something in watercolor or in paint, and transferring it into an image that can be reproduced. Most of the prints that I've made there are monoprints, so we only we, you know they're, they're they're unique, original prints. You can use the silkscreen process in order to make um, an addition of prints. So basically, what you what you're doing is repeating the same process on the paper you know, over and over again, 20 times, 30 times, however many uh, the edition is. With a monoprint, it is the only one, it's, it's unique. But there, there, there'll be others that are similar, but they won't be two the same. Um, but what, we, what we've done is I've now made seven, as well as all of the monoprints, I've made seven edition prints, some of which are in the exhibition in Deal. Um, and what they have to do when we're making them, they have to annotate every move that we make. So we don't normally do that, but if we think we might be making a, a, a print, we, we annotate every colour, every sequence, how many, how many layers the, 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 the silk, how, how many layers of paint it gets, things like that. And so you can actually then reproduce one. Mm -hmm. So at the end of making perhaps you know, 30 unique prints, there might be one, there might be two that we think, oh, that one would be great. You know, as a that sort of sums up the the, the three days that we've been working, and um, and so so far, yeah, seven seven prints. Interesting. Um, and is this the first time you've seen them all together in one? Yep. On the um, walls around you, they go into my store uh, in boxes of different editions, different times, so they're all numbered. Um, and I go through them occasionally to show people yeah. a particular set, but I've never seen this many. I think that in the exhibition there's about 45, perhaps 50, certainly 45 prints. Um, I've never seen that many. I've seen you know, 10 or 12 in one exhibition, but never this many. And what we try to do in the exhibition is to actually, you know, start with the first prints and show the sequence throughout the 12 visits, um, which for me is really interesting. But alongside the ones which I've been working on in the silk screen, one thing that I learned, which should be a fairly obvious thing, but it didn't, didn't occur to me as much, but it, there's a thing you know, where you register the print, you have to register things so that when you put it back over, you can get it in exactly the right place on the print. So then, in order to make that connection between the sculpture and the prints even closer, I started to have cut uh, brass laser cut sheets, which I would use as sort of templates or printing blocks, um, in, in, and that I could do in my own studio. I've, I've always liked the idea of, of working in the studio as well as being able to go and work with other people in an environment where you know it's very very much under pressure in a way. Uh, exciting, mm. but I developed a process in, in what I would call my studio prints where we use layers and layers of colour onto these brass plates and then I re-register. But interestingly sometimes I'll take, the, I'll take the plate slightly off register which gives a certain three-dimensional or a, a kind of quality to the edge of the, of the shape. Um, and, it, and that's an exciting process as well because, it, it, again, it's, it's layer upon that, sometimes 20 layers on one plate. So there might be, I don't know, 80, 80 different layers of colour in one, in one print, mm. one on top of another. I think that although they've changed a great deal in, you know, two years, um, there's still something about the shapes that I'm working with. I've actually probably honed down to a certain extent the colours that I've been using. Uh, I guess they probably might be considered to be sculptural 
colours. I mean, the one, the one thing about print, and, and I'm only dealing with one area, I mean, I haven't touched on, you know, etchings or other forms of printmaking yet. Um, yet. No, yet. <laughs> um, and even embossing, we know, we know, next time I go, we're going to try some experiments with, with embossing um, on paper. But there's so much to do. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of the more you do in the printmaking, in the silk screen, it appears that there's so much more that could be done. Um, and so even the scale of these prints has changed dramatically. You know, some of them are very large, some of them are quite small. Um, it, it's interesting. Um, but I would probably like to make them even bigger, some of them, you know, really try to make something that hangs on the wall, even if it's in sections that has a much, much more sculptural quality, so that it's a very physical kind of um, two-dimensional, almost like an object, rather than a, 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 than a picture. Mm. Um, I was re-watching um, that Melvin Bragg interview last night, where he interviews Francis Bacon in the, in the colony room or something. I'm looking at the pictures, and Melvin Bragg says to him, uh, why do you do it, Francis? So if I was to ask you the same question, um, well, I don't, I don't do it, I don't do it to make hundreds and hundreds of prints. For me, I do it, I do it to learn more about things. About you know, it's like for me at the end of the day or end of three days of working, I like to, I like to walk away thinking I've learned things that I didn't know anything about and that I've developed my language in a way that, you know, I couldn't think about. So I'm very much the kind of artist that looks at things, uses my... And if something happens, which could even be an accident, you know, something that perhaps even Kip or Alan at the print studio might say, oh dear, I'll look at it as a potential positive because it's a visual thing and I think, well, you know, that might be, there might be a way of making that work, you know, in, a, in another set of yeah. so, I'm constantly sort of looking at them and thinking, where, where will it go, where will it go next? But, it, but they're definitely not made to, in a sense of having more stuff around it. it it's a kind of learning thing. Really. Do you feel every time we go back, because it's lovely that this show is like of 12 visits, mm -hmm. do you feel like you've learned something more or different each time you go? Yeah, I mean, it, it splits into different categories. I mean, I learn, I obviously learn technical, technical things. So I understand the process much more than I would have done. I mean, when I first went, I hadn't, I hadn't got a clue, really, what, what, what it was about. Mm. So I learn more about that, but one of the problems with that, and one of the things that I wanted to avoid, so for example, what silk screen can become, it can become quite decorative and the colours, one colour laying over another colour produces a, a third colour and, you know, and, I, and I, didn't, I didn't want that, I wanted them to have the same kind of very specific quality that my sculptures have, so um, I think it's hard to know what people, how people will respond to them, but I think they get that sense of, you know, some of them being very sculptural, they're almost like like a kind of print of a, an object. What do you want people's response to it? Um, I love the, the fact that, that they're, they appear quite simple, first of all. Um, it's, they're quite strong images, so there is a kind of um, starting point of colour and an and overall image. But I think they're quite complex, you know, and so I like people to be able to go through that the understanding of, of how they've been made, the different layers, and, 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 and actually in this exhibition to uh, be able to look, look at the differences between them. Um, and, and, and it should, I think, give some kind of, I don't know, further understanding of what I'm doing, but also print, you know, the process, and the silkscreen in particular. Mm-hmm.